Hey everybody, welcome to the Safety Tribe uh, YouTube series. My name is Ron and today we're going to talk about how to do your total recordable injury rate calculation. Your total recordable injury rate calculation is a simple mathematical calculation that calculates an index that every business in the United States uses so that you can take one business and compare it to another business and kind of see where in your injury rate lies. You can say whether this industry or this business is, has fewer or more injuries than another business. So to make this calculation, you need two things, two pieces of information. The first piece of information is you need to know how many OSHA recordable injuries that your company sustained during the previous period. Now the previous period is nearly always the previous calendar year. So in the previous calendar year, how many OSHA recordable injuries did you have? Now, an OSHA recordable injury, uh, to make this description short, is an injury that OSHA calls beyond first aid. That would mean stitches. That would mean uh, getting a prescription for antibiotic or painkillers, a fracture, a hospital stay, or maybe if a person was injured so bad they couldn't come to work or couldn't come by to work at full duty. Those kind of injuries are called OSHA recordable injuries. First aid injuries, like a paper cut, you get a paper cut, you put some ointment on it, wrap a Band-Aid on it, and you're done. Those kind of injuries, first aid injuries, do not belong in this list. They don't belong in this number. Only OSHA recordable injuries are being considered here. The next thing you need to know is you need to know how many total hours were worked by all of your employees during the previous period. Once again, that's usually during the previous calendar year. Now that includes <clears throat> the number of hours that were worked by weekly or hourly people. It also includes the number of hours that were worked by salaried people. The way this is generally done is you go to the previous year's payroll, if you're talking about annually, and you look at how many hourly hours were paid for during the previous year. And it doesn't matter whether one, one employee worked 10 hours or whether he worked 1,000 hours, you just add those number of hours, however many there were, you add those up and that's the hourly part of it. Then you take the number of sal salaried individuals and you take, for example, if there are 10 salaried individuals, you figure that uh, each one of them works an average of 2,000 hours per year. So 10 times 2,000, that would be 20,000 salaried hours per year. You add the salaried hours to the weekly or hourly hours, and that is the number that goes in the denominator. So those are the only two pieces of information you need to do this calculation. So now we're going to do, let's just kind of do a sample calculation. Let's say we have a company that makes widgets. And this widget manufacturing company last year sustained three recordable injuries. Three people got stitches. Okay, cut themselves, got stitches. Those are called recordable injuries. That is the number that goes right here. Now this hypothetical widget manufacturing company we have, let's say that that widget manufacturing company has 75 employees, each of whom who worked 2,000 hours during the previous year So that is 150,000 total hours, and that is the number that goes in the denominator. Those are the only two numbers you need, this number and, well, it's this number and this number. Those are the only two numbers you need to do the calculation. So let's finish this calculation for our hypothetical widget manufacturing company. So we take three times 200,000 
that's the numerator, and divide that by 150,000 total hours worked. That then is equal to 600 divided by 150,000. I'm getting where I can't get down far enough. R is equal to four if you do that. So in this case, our TRR, TRIR, total recordable injury rate is equal to four. Okay, that's all there is to this calculation. It is not a difficult calculation. Now having done this calculation, you may be wondering, what does this number mean? Is that good? Or is it bad? Is OSHA going to come after me if they see my number and it's four? What, what does that mean? Well, this is a standard number or an index. For example, if you're a roofing contractor, every roofing contractor can do the calculation and they'll come up with their number and your, your, your roofing contractor business can be compared to the, all the other roofing compact, contractor business. I will tell you that for a roofing contractor, the average total recordable injury rate is probably in the range of six to seven. So if, this, if you're a roofing contractor and your total recordable injury rate for the previous year was four, you're doing good. Most likely it's not going to be four if you're in the roofing business. If you're a widget manufacturer and you have a manufacturing plan and you make widgets, four is going to be pretty close to the average for manufacturing injuries. In, manufacturing industries. So it depends on what kind of business you have. Healthcare has the TRRIR average. Construction, manufacturing, all, every kind of business has their own number. So the way you figure out where you are in here is that every year the, uh, the Department of Labor, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics part of that, publishes a list North American Industrial Classification System codes. For every one of those codes, they publish the average TRRIR. So the average injury rate, you can look up. And you, if you're below the average injury, industry injury rate, you're doing great. If your business is above average, then you have room for improvement on your safety program. And so that's what OSHA does with this number. Also, if <clears throat> another thing this number is good for, is used for, is that if you're a small construction company, you're probably wanting to get contracts with large multi-hundred millions of dollars companies. And if you want to get contracts with those companies, they're going to want to know what your safety record is. They're going to want to know who they're doing business with. They're going to want to know if you come on this, their site, are they going to have a problem? And they figure that out partially based on your OSHA injury rate. So there's a good, lot of good reasons to keep this stores, to keep your score as low as possible. So if you <clears throat> want a copy of the script and the hard copy of the calculations that I've done for this and some other ways that you can calculate for your total uh, days away from work calculation, how to modify this to do some other things, just go to the bottom of the page. There should be a link down there. Click on that link and we'll send you a copy of my script for this presentation and a copy of or a link to the, all the NAICS codes and the average injury rate for those codes. And also if you would, if you do us a big favor, if you click subscribe and like, Thank you very much and you have a great day.